What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be going over the most efficient way for you to hunt shiny Pokemon in mass outbreaks in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. There are many things that you can do in order to get yourself very good shiny odds during these mass outbreaks. And it works much differently than mass outbreaks did in PLA. Instead, it runs on sort of a new dynamic system that in my opinion is much better. If you're going to be doing mass outbreaks before the post game, the best odds that you could possibly have are 1 out of 1365.67. If you made your way to the end game and you have access to five star raids and you can do five star raids, you can have as good of odds out of one out of 683.08. But if you've completed the Pokedex, received the shiny charm, and you started doing five star raids, the best odds that you can have for this are one out of 512.44. I'm going to be going over the exact method that you would be doing regardless of your current progression in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now there are going to be some nuances here that I'm going to be talking about and when I'm mentioning them they may seem a little weird but these are going to be the exact best times that you can do very specific things to not waste time doing mass outbreaks. The very first thing is let's get you a mass outbreak. And if there's one already on your map, you're at a very, very smidgen slight disadvantage here. But if you're like, you know what? I want to do some mass outbreak shiny hunting today. Then you're actually at a little bit of an advantage. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save my game. I'm now going to close my game. I'm going to go to system settings. I'm going to go to date and time. And whatever the current time is, I'm actually going to be setting it to 11.59 p.m. Doesn't matter the day. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be starting this mass outbreak at the first minute of the day. So if you wanted to do part of this mass outbreak now and then you have to go to work or school and then you want to come home and do it a little bit more, you can do that. Setting it to 11.59, let's boot the software back up. Upon loading the game back up, all the Pokemon that were around us are going to respawn. And above me, you're going to be seeing messages that your mass outbreaks are going to be changing. There they are. Now that we're in the minute of the new day, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put down a save. If one of these Pokemon appeal to you, fantastic, let's begin. But if they don't appeal to you, then all you have to do is hit the menu button, go to home, go to date and time, change the day exactly one day forward. You may also want to reset it back to being exactly midnight or midnight 01. And when you come back to the game, you just leave the menu and then your outbreaks are going to refresh once again. I myself found this little boy over here. What's his name? Vroom, something like that. Great. Let's head on over there. I want to take a moment and actually look at the environment in which that Pokemon is going to be spawning. It seems like it's right here. I don't see any on the map quite yet. Oh, is it on top of this little hill? Oh, great. It's on top of this little hill right here. And you may be in a situation that you're not going to have a lot of room. Before even starting this outbreak, I'd recommend opening up Picnic and see if you can actually place down a Picnic. If you can, and the Pokemon are going to be within that area that they spawn, then you're going to be okay. So when I unload the Picnic, are the Pokemon going to be there? I don't see them. Okay, perhaps that was a little close. If I go to this side of this little boulder and put down the Picnic, not enough room over here, not enough room. It looks like this is the least amount of width that I can do for a picnic, which is gonna be a little bit rough. And because of that, while I do want Varum, this may not be the outbreak for me. So I'm just gonna hit the menu button and I'm gonna go to home and I'm gonna to system settings and we're gonna move the day one day forward. I may get another Varum, I may not get another Varum. I'm also going to reset it back to 12.01 a.m. Going back into the game and leaving the menu, outbreaks are going to be changing. I still don't see any that I want, so I'm just going to hit the menu button, date and time, change it one day forward. And I'm going to continue this process until I find a Pokemon that I want to do. I actually found a Florges mass outbreak, and I just checked in my Pokemon home. I do not have a Florges, so let's go see if this is going to be a big enough area for us to effectively do a mass outbreak. And it seems like they're spawning over there and over there. In addition, this Pokemon doesn't seem to move a lot, unlike the Varooms do. So let's go ahead and set up a picnic. And I want to just make sure that there's going to be some place that I can set up a picnic 
and when the picnic is done, the Pokemon are going to respawn well. It looks like we do have a place that they are going to be spawning efficiently. Fantastic. Now that I have selected the Pokemon that I want to hunt, and the specific location of the outbreak that's ideal for this method, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put down hard save. And I would also recommend turning auto saves off at this time. From here, I'm gonna be using the let's go feature and I'm gonna be counting 30 Pokemon that I'm gonna be knocking out. We're going for a total of 60, but for some reason, counting to 32 times in my head is a lot easier than counting to 60 once. Also, this Pokemon is only weak to poison, so the Pokemon that I'm using for Let's Go, I need to make sure that it's going to be poison type. And I'm pretty sure this is my 30th. Now I'm going to be knocking out 30 more of them. You may see a little pop-up like this that is gonna say there's not a lot of Pokemon left. Don't worry about that. With what we're doing, there's gonna be plenty of Pokemon for us. If the Pokemon knocks out a different species, that's fine. Just don't get it confused and don't add those Pokemon to the total. You have to knock out 60 Pokemon in total of the exact species that we are gonna be doing in this mass outbreak. And this is gonna be my 60th. Now there's always some room for human error here and there is a chance that you counted wrong. There's a chance that I counted wrong. So I'm just gonna go ahead and knock out like a three more. And now that I've successfully knocked out 60 Pokemon, that number has now gone to one out of 1,365.67. If you don't have the shiny charm or access to five star raids and Herba Mystica, then the next little bit here is not gonna really apply to you, but I do recommend watching it that way. Once you are ready for this, you are more knowledgeable of what's going on. I'm gonna go to options. I'm gonna double check that auto save is off and I'm gonna put down a hard save. The reason I'm doing that is, this is now our basis. This mass outbreak has had 60 Pokemon defeated and that's all it needs. This mass outbreak is going to continue being here until 11.59 p.m. in game time or in switch time. If I wanted to get distracted and go to the other side of the world and then come back here, I can do that. And this will still be at after 60 Pokemon are defeated. Do a whole bunch of stuff. Defeat some Titans, beat the game, see the credits. Go shiny hunting in different methods. Come back here, still within that same 24 hour in switch period, and this will still be the same mass outbreak with the same stats. The only things that will get rid of this mass outbreak are your clock hits midnight in switch time, or you defeat the remaining floor just here, or whatever Pokemon you have. So, after I put down this hard save, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna set up a picnic. These recipes that I've previously discussed are going to give you Encounter Power 3 and they're going to give you Sparkling Power 3. Feel free to screenshot this now if you'd like. All of them require Salty Arba Mystica, many of them require two, and infrequently we're gonna be seeing Sweet, Spicy, and Sour. So, because we don't need Encounter Power 3 because we have this mass outbreak, I would highly recommend that you first choose to use your Bitter Herba Mystica, followed by your Spicy and Sour, as those are only used in one each, followed by Sweet. And because this Pokemon is fairy type, I need to make it with one tomato. Now also a neat thing here is if you wanted to, you could leave this area, go set up co-op play with someone, go make a sandwich with them, one of you provide one Herba Mystica each, and boom, you're gonna both have a buff for the same type of Pokemon, but it's only gonna cost you half as many Herba Mystica. So if you have someone that you can do the co-op mode with, you can save on ingredients that way. One tomato, great, I have two bitters. I'm gonna use both of those. It does not matter the flag pick that you use for these recipes. Three tomatoes have been added on. You don't even need the top of the bread. It doesn't matter where the pick goes. That's a beautiful sandwich. That's the exact sandwich that I need right now. This year truly magnificent Austin John original sandwich is gonna give me sparkling power fairy level three. Also title and item drop, but that's not really too important to me. Remember that we did put down a hard save before this and we have auto saves off. If you just get bored and decide to not do this anymore, you just reload your save and you're not using this Herba Mystica. I'm now gonna go ahead and hide my face and I'm just gonna look at the Pokemon here and I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage because Floor just seems to spawn in a stack like this. It's very purple at the bottom. So even if it is stacked up like this, I should be able to see it. Now I'm just gonna pick a place that I can kind of see both of these spawn places and I'm gonna set up a picnic. 
By doing this picnic, all of the Pokemon are going to despawn. And now I'm going to slowly move my character until I find the perfect place that I get the ones on the left and that pool of them that was just there on the right. Because there might be some behind me. Yep, there is. And I don't want to have to pan my camera around. This is it. This is the whole strategy. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm getting out of position that I'm going to not have those spawn and I am going to have those spawn. So every time I do that picnic, I'm going to have to pan the camera around. Now, if you're not a fan of doing the picnic method, you're welcome to just move away from the mass outbreak and move back toward the mass outbreak. This also may be more advantageous if the shiny is very easy to see and there's a lot of stuff going on. Or if you didn't follow that earlier step and now you're at a place that you can't really set up a picnic and the Pokemon are not respawning efficiently, you may be forced to just kind of move around and force them to despawn and respawn. If you did make the sandwich, you could hit D right to always see how much time you have left on your current buffs. And as you're doing this, you're gonna move around a little bit and you kinda wanna find like a sweet spot. You'll know this sweet spot because you're getting more and more Florges or whatever Pokemon spawning soon as you're done with the picnic. So if I look to where they were and I don't see them, I see some over there, I definitely need to move back a little bit more to get them to spawn right in my line of view. And I think I found that sweet spot. I could kind of see them all come in one by one. That's exactly what I want. If you're in an area that's not a field, but more of a cave system or a valley, which has a decreased area in which they can spawn, you're going to find this to be a little bit more effective because they're all going to spawn in one place instead of having to look around. If you have the shiny charm and you are doing this without a sandwich, then you're looking at one out of 819. But if you're doing it with the shiny charm and with the sandwiches that I told you about, you're going to be looking at one out of 512.44. Considering that you're going to be despawning about 10 Pokemon at a time, and it takes about 30 seconds for us to do this, within that half hour, you are going to be seeing about 600 Pokemon, which is the one-to-one -one odds for you to find a shiny. That's the crazy thing about odds. You could be at one-to-one -one odds, you could be at double odds, you could be at triple odds and you may just not be lucky enough to see it. If your half hour runs out of your sandwich, feel free to just turn the game off and turn it back on. You still have your ingredients. These Pokemon are still at the number 60 defeated and there's no loss of progress whatsoever. You just get to remake that sandwich for free and you're good to go. I would just like to add a little bit of a blurb here in regard to accessibility. I've been speaking with people who have afflictions of various types of color blindness. And for people who are specifically weak of a certain color, there are some tricks that you can do for one of these hunts in order to see the Pokemon a little bit better. Granted, there are some Pokemon that you cannot see the difference even if you have regular perfect vision. If you're playing your Nintendo Switch in docked mode, some advice that I've learned is you can actually change your TV's settings to be able to see specific tints and colors a little bit more effectively. You may find that to be useful. If you're in a situation that you're not able to distinguish different colors of Pokemon at all, regardless of your current screen settings, then you may wish to just go over and defeat all of these Pokemon in Let's Go mode like we did for the first 60. And if you're not successful in finding one, then you just reload your save and you're good to go again. If you are going to be doing that method of using the auto battle feature to continuously knock out Pokemon, then you may want to make that sandwich and then after the sandwich is made, put down a hard save. While it may be a much faster loss of ingredients, you are still going to be having that outbreak every time you reload the game. If you have access to a capture card to be able to play games on the PC or various platforms, you may want to consider throwing on a Luma key or a color key to get rid of specific colors that you know that the shiny Pokemon is not. In this case, I've decided to remove a vast majority of the color green. Therefore, if I were to see a Florges that has the bottom half fully in picture, then there is a chance that that's going to be the shiny Pokemon. I have been doing this for 27 minutes. And despite these Pokemon spawning inside of themselves, I have finally found it. As you can see right here, there is a Florges that is shiny, spawned in the exact same location as a regular Florges. Right now I'm gonna put down a hard save because I now have the shiny Pokemon on screen. 
If I were to enter a battle and something goes awry, it uses a self-destruct explosion, a recoil move, something I'm not prepared for, I don't have the right ball that I want for it, problems can happen. Now, if I were to set up a picnic, it would despawn and be gone forever. If I were to leave this immediate vicinity, it would despawn and be gone forever. If I leave and come back, these same Pokemon will not be here. I have to be in front of this Pokemon for it to remain here. If I walk inside of it with my camera closed, that's how I get the best, best reaction. Yes, thank you. There we go, that's the shot I wanted, thank you. Now if I did not encounter this floor just within the half hour which is ending in 20 seconds, I would have just reloaded the game and from reloading the game I would have been able to just make the sandwich again, do this all again. And now that I've gotten all the b-roll that I need of the wild shiny Pokemon, now it's time to, for, to actually catch it. I'm just happy that looking at the size of Flabebe, I'm not gonna have to shiny hunt this and I got to look at the much larger one, so that's a win, right? <laughs> Oh, first ball, I got a crit. Nice. There we go. Florges, the red flower fairy Pokemon right there. That's going to be the fastest and most efficient way for you to use mass outbreaks for you to hunt down a shiny Pokemon. I hope this information was helpful and concise. If there's any additional tips that you have, leave them down below. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out. Man, they see me shining like I got the charm. Stay strapped, got that jet ball in my palm. Felt from the sky, guess I'm the chosen one. And if you need to know how, check out Austin John. Champion flow, flow. Yeah, I got that champion flow, flow